All right, welcome back to Turnbull Garage. So today we're going to be carrying on with this Subaru Sambar Rescue. And today my goal in this video is to try to get this engine started and also remove these coolant lines. Um, and if I get the material, go ahead and manufacture some new ones. So uh, yeah, I got line also trying to find out how I'm going to fix this broken stud on the gas tank. So let's just get right into it. So I did manage to pick up a battery the other day and I just dropped that in there. Uh, it's a little taller than I was hoping for. Uh, with the bottom of the box of the truck here, it might be quite tight to get these terminals off uh, to pull the battery out if needed. But um, I'm going to leave it in there for now. I think it'll probably work. It's a little taller. It's, a, it's actually, I think, for a Honda, this battery, the size-wise. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's good. So the battery's in there now. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get the coil hooked up and get a good spark. And let's see if we can start this thing. Let's see if that'll fire. Well, there you go. It started. It flashed. Uh, obviously, there's no fuel, but uh, that's a great sign. The engine is actually... Let's try that again. No, well, it did start. That's great. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to pull out these coolant lines next. All right, I got those pipes out. Not an easy task. They're in a pretty tough spot. Uh, the one bracket I removed, I actually did break another bolt off. I don't know how I'm going to get that one replaced. It's up here. It's in a, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I may just end up um, using one bolt to hold that clamp on because honestly that's going to be a real pain. But over to the pipes. So this is the one I could tell was obviously rotted through. They'd put a, a hose on there. But interestingly, they used copper. So the guy soldered some copper on there and, uh, and made it work. Actually, uh, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Except that the rest of the pipe here is rotted so badly that it's probably on its way out anyway. So like I say, on my other sandbar I've got, I actually did um, make new pipes, which is what I'll do on this as well. So I'm going to have to go to a local metal shop, uh, metal supply store, I should say, and uh, they've, I know they got some pipe. I'll buy some and I'll show you what I did. The tricky part really is on the end, how it's sort of swaged or it's got a lip on it so that you can clamp behind it and the hose won't slide off. I had a little trick to do something not as good as that, but still works quite well. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is tackle this broken stud on the fuel level sending unit. Uh, I've had some time to think about this and I'm just going to drill I'll just take this out here. I'm going to drill this stud right through the tank and then I'm going to tap it. And yeah, I'm going to try and put a bolt in from underneath uh, with some fuel tank sealant on there. So hopefully that will seal it. Or I'll actually just put a stud in there with fuel tank sealant and, and put it on uh, with maybe some Loctite and sealant. I'm not sure. The scary part, of course, is I'm working around gas fumes. So I've got my fire extinguisher right here. I'm going to shove a rag into this hole to block not only the fumes from coming out, but the uh, shavings from going in. Um, yeah, and just hopefully this works. I will have the camera set up on time lapse. So if there is an almighty explosion, at least I'll catch it on film. All right, so there you have it. I managed to fix that stud. It was, uh, there was enough meat there that I was able to uh, drill it down without actually getting into the tank. And I could get probably about three or four good threads on there and enough that that stud is held in. And there you go, crisis averted. Uh, thank God that would have been a nightmare because otherwise you're basically replacing the tank and I don't want to go there. All right, let's move on to the next thing. 
Okay, so with that fuel tank done, let's go to the metal supermarket and pick up some new pipes for these coolant lines that I've got to replace. All right, got the pipes here. So basically what I've got is, you know, this pipe's a little bit big for this one, but I will turn this down in my lathe a little bit. I don't mind having the pipe a little bit large to stretch the hose over. And for the one over there, I've got this pipe here. So I'll cut these to length. I'm gonna flare the ends. Then I'll drill some holes in them and uh, make up these pipes to sort of match the other ones and weld them in. All right, it's been a few days since I recorded last. I actually went out to Vancouver and picked up a new car. If you're curious what that's all about, check it out on my channel there. And uh, But today I'm going to get going on these coolant pipes. I think most of the remaining part of the video will be actually just getting these done because there's actually quite a bit of work to make these things. So first thing I'm going to do is get these pipes cut to length and uh, and flare the ends. First thing I did was actually just mark the length on here. <coughs> So I'm just going to use a simple hacksaw to cut these off and then I'm going to use my lathe to uh, finish the ends nice and square. Well, I just found out uh, this won't work in my lathe, although it's pretty sketchy holding something that long hanging out the tail, the uh, headstock, but the, the spindle bore is actually slightly too small. It's almost size for size. Uh, so that's not going to work. So I'm just going to have to, I got them pretty square, so I'm just going to file them up a bit and... Uh, then we'll look at tapering them. All right, so to uh, swage these ends, or to s make them kind of flare out, I guess you could say, uh, what I do is I, I took an old breaker bar that I had that was broken. I cut the end off. This actually has a nice taper on it. I put one end of the pipe on a block of wood and the other end like that and just beat it in with a hammer and it just slowly flares this end out so that now when you push the, the hose over top, and clamp it down here with your clamp, it's behind this raised ring. Like I say, it's not as nice as the original, but it does work. And then you gotta make sure you, you don't want a sharp edge, so you wanna file this really nice after and make sure it's kind of rounded over. So let's, uh, let's do that next. All right, there you can see it's kind of flared out there. That's all it takes, that's all I put on there, just a bit of a flare. So uh, I'll do the other three sides here, the other three ends. Those are cut to length. The ends are flared out. So the next thing I'll do is, is uh, machine up my other little spigot pipe, whatever you want to call it, T to size, drill a hole in one of the pipes there and get ready to weld it in. This is the piece of metal that I've got. So I'll cut this to length and I'll be able to machine a bit of a a bit of a ball on the end like that one, a little bit more true to the original. So there you have it. It's just a simple little spigot that I'll weld into the pipe. That should work just fine. All right, so the next thing I'll do is just sort of mark where this pipe needs to go, which is right about there. Measurements aren't super critical, that's for sure. So I'm going to take my drill, start a hole here. Use my lathe center bit because that doesn't wander. Now I'm just going to use a, a uni bit. It started. And I gotta, I gotta get one that's a little bit steeper here.
Yeah, that's going to work just like that. I think what I'll do is actually just try to get that tacked. I don't want to have it go through. If it goes through, then it'll have to try to grind it. All right, let's give this a little tack. All right, it's, uh, it's not pretty, but it'll work. All right, so there we go. We got two pipes done. The last thing to do is give them a paint job and they'll be done. So after I get those painted, the next thing I gotta do is deal with these broken screws in here. They're kind of you know, nasty, man. But anyway, uh, I've dealt with them before, so I'll get these all wire wheeled, cleaned up get the broken screws out and get some new new screws and put those all back together. All right, so the emergency brake cable that was on the left side of the truck that was badly seized, it is no good. I tried unseizing it, but it is toast, so that is done. And I just received today my box from Japan. I ordered it on, it got shipped, believe it, on Friday. Today is Tuesday and it's already here. So hats off to those guys. They shipped it nice and quick for me. Oh, that's a genuine Subaru part. That's nice. So there you have it. A brand new. Oh, look how nice that slides. That's nice. So as you notice, you may have noticed, I, uh, I kept the bolt that was on this bracket you never know what comes with these things and yeah it didn't come with that so there you go so yeah today i'm gonna get these emergency brake cables back in and also install those coolant pipes because they're done all right one thing i never did really show because i didn't have good light is how these cables are attached under the cab as you can see there's two 12 millimeter nuts and that holds those brackets on and feeds the cat of the wires the cables up into the bottom of the cab and then the rest the cables are just put inside these these uh, little clips along the fuel tank and then mount them into the into the truck all right so here's my new pipes i just got them sitting on my mower i'm going to drop them in right now and before i do that one thing that uh, instead of laying these down on right on the the bare metal i've got some old 3m sticky stuff i'm actually just going to use it as a rubber barrier between the brackets and the pipes and that helps save them from having uh, corrosion or getting corrosion i should say all right so i've got the pipes installed uh, this bracket is in and this bracket over here is i've just got it laying here uh, i managed to get the broken bolts out of there i've got some new bolts i just picked up and i'll be clamping that down and Get those hoses on but uh, yeah so if you do really common these things um, these pipes do rot out uh, it's it's a lot of work but well actually it's not a lot of work but it's you know you need a few tools to do it but you can make your own pipes uh, and replace them it's uh, it's not too bad so there you go all right so that's pretty much going to do it for this video i think uh, i'm going to end it here it's been a long day and uh, yeah i want to get some content out to you guys so let's get this out uh, yeah, I got that e-brake cable in, got those pipes installed, and uh, the next video, what I'm going to do is get this fuel sending unit. I got to get a, um, a neutral tab welded on here. Uh, that's the next thing I got to do, and I'm going to try and get these brakes installed, get the brake shoes all put back on, and get this thing started. Because with these pipes now in, I can get some coolant in this thing. I'm in at the point right now where, uh, now that I know the fuel is not bad, I think I can get this thing started. So that's my goal. The next video is definitely have this engine running and idling and uh, cheering. So yeah, I uh, hope you're enjoying the video in this series and saving this little little sandbar here. And uh, yeah, think about subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, numbers are going up. It's uh, looking good. So appreciate all that. Uh, thoughts and comments down below. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching and have yourself a great day.